I've got some pouring that I've intended to do Welcome live. Welcome to another yeah. episode of Sharing Our Pairings. This is Sharing Our Pairings, episode 35, <laughs> Twin Engine Coffee. I'm your host, John the Cigar Surgeon, broadcast live around the world on CigarFederation.com, rebroadcast on Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks very much for everyone tuning in on Armed Forces Radio Network, and thanks everyone who's listening to podcast. I'm here, as always, with our co-host, Robbie Rass. Rob, what's going on, brother? Oh, you caught me. I was just about to take a puff on my, uh, my cigar here, but uh, things are good. I'm uh, I'm I'm much more comfortable than you are. You've got uh, some some weather issues that you're dealing with. And my biggest issue is if I have the AC turned on too high. Yeah, this is the um, Canadian rain. You know, because we don't get enough summer, I guess, or we get too much summer. So between the winter and the hailstorms, I don't know if people checked out. I posted on the on the Cigar Federation site. We got some hail over here, and it was it was something else. I wasn't going to be able to do the show if it was hailing. So fortunately, it's just raining on me. Yeah, those two weeks of summer that you guys get must just really blow you out. We really got to enjoy them. Yeah, both of them, both of those weeks. But no, things are good here, man. I'm excited uh, to uh, to get into some of this coffee, and I'm just getting started on my cigar. I'm smoking the uh, Florida Selva Maduro uh, Robusto, and you guys know what I think about this cigar. So if you haven't smoked it yet, shame on you. And uh, I went with a, a slightly different pick this uh, week. I went with a Cuban cigar because I'm a dirty Canadian. And uh, it's a Ramona Loans uh, Exclusivo Canada 2010. It's the Gordito, and it's delicious. Um, it's a little, it's a, it's sweet, but it's got a little bit of pepper to it. And um, I kind of like this cigar with coffee because you know coffee tends to have some, or at least a lot of coffee I drink tends to have some bright qualities to it, so it offsets it. But enough about our cigars. Uh, we've got a special guest tonight. We do. Do you want me to introduce him, or do you want to do yeah, it? Yeah, please, please do. <laughs> I'm going to smoke my cigar and just let you take the reins here. We are so professional here. This is awesome. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Colin with us from uh, Twin Engine Coffee. Colin, thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate it. My pleasure. It's uh, it's great to be here. It's you know we're just sitting here having a cigar, talking about coffee. That's not too bad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now John's put me in full fledged host mode. Now we've got okay. another show called Cigar Chat that I have. Logan's my co-host, so I have no choice but to be like in host mode. If not, we get way sidetracked. So, John, you stepped in it this time, man. I don't know why you put me in this. This once I get, you know how I get. I get the blinders on, and once I'm going, I'm going. I just, I just wanted to sip on my espresso. I'm, I'm drinking a, a twin engine uh, cigar blend, uh, dark roast, and I've decided to do it a couple different ways. And, um, you know, with Cuban, Cuban cigar, I feel like espresso is kind of a gimme. Um, so I just, you know, I was looking for an excuse to sip on my espresso, but, uh, Colin, Colin, of course, we saw at the, uh, IPCPR in New Orleans and, uh, he had the, uh, was it small exhibitor award for the uh, show, but more importantly, he had a lineup outside of the booth about 25 people deep all day <laughs> long. Yeah. Hopefully that wasn't just to get free coffee. It was, no, it was, it was a great, uh, trade show for us. It was the first time we have exhibited at a trade show and, um, it was fantastic. We uh, were about to have a lot of new retailers uh, across the United States and Canada, and uh, one other country, which we'll announce in a few weeks. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was fantastic. It was nice to see you guys down there too. Yeah, it was yeah, good. To, uh, oh, go ahead. So hey, John, you, you screwed it up, man. We had a good we had good mojo for the first like sixty episodes that we did, and you jacked it up today. I jacked it up. It's the rain, man. It's throwing me off my game. Yeah, we were um we were obviously really excited to talk to you in person, but uh, I, I'd be lying if I said we weren't super uh, excited about the coffee because the coffee at the no offense to the Staybridge, but man, the coffee there is was just janky. And you know, as Rob knows, I'm kind of a uh, like everything I take up, I'm kind of a snob, a uh, recessionist about coffee, and um, I could not drink the coffee. It was it was terrible. So that was that was not only the first good cup of coffee I drank all week, but that was the first great cup of coffee I drank all week. So it was it was good. So I need to do something here before we get too far into this because I've got water that's piping hot here. Roger that. So. Uh, for the people who are watching on, on, on video, you can kind of see this contraption I've got here. I've got a coffee cup on the bottom and this um, sort of conical-shaped thing on top with uh, a filter inside and coffee grounds in, on the inside. It's basically, uh, you know, some people who already know what this is. Sometimes it's called a Melita. That's one of the brands that makes it. But um, we're actually trying to work with some craftsmen down here in Nicaragua to make them. But basically what it is is it's a single-cup um, American-style coffee maker. 
And so what I'm doing here is just pouring in the water, uh, boiling water, right on top of the grounds, and then gravity just pulls it down through the through the filter, and I'm um, just making a, a cup of American style coffee. But it's kind of visual, so I thought I might as well do it on the air. But um, I want to get this coffee going before we get too far into this. That's that's really cool. I'm waiting, like I'm watching you pour it, and I can see yeah. the water level rising, and I'm waiting for it to come <laughs> spilling out the sides, but it's not. No, it's not. The filter holds it in pretty well when I, when I go a little too high like I just did. Um, and then it'll go back down because I filled the grounds up pretty high. I like my coffee strong. So I filled the grounds up probably about halfway uh, in this uh, in this pour over. And um, yeah, and so I'll lift this up. I don't know if the oh, video is catching yeah, yeah. that. Can you see it coming out? So that's going to be American style coffee in about a minute. Um, which is uh, just it's great when when you don't need to make a, you know ten cups or whatever, and you just want to make something for yourself, or if you want to try something different and, and not use a ton of uh, coffee grounds on. That would have been yeah, easier. For, that would have made my job easier leading up to uh, up to this show here, because <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, ended, I had, up, uh, ended up so, making it quite a bit. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I I was kind of in the same boat. I don't have a pour over device. I do have a, a vac. Pot, but I was telling Colin before the show started, I actually broke the top of it, so that was no good. And I didn't want to make fork like I, I I'm greedy, so I want to save what coffee I have left for myself for smoking for the <laughs> next few days. So I did. Uh, I actually did my uh, French press uh, for both, which I wasn't going to do originally, but um, you know, that's got to roll with what you got. Yeah, yeah I ended, absolutely. I ended up just going with the standard drip coffee machine. Um, I have a French press, but I'm not really that good at it. And I feel like every time I do it, I screw up the proportions. So maybe that's something we could talk about at some point because I am not – I'm a coffee novice. I, I really like to drink it. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, the different ways of making it and, you know, all that kind of stuff, I, I'm, I, I'm not very well versed. Well, I'm sure that um, we could probably do an hour-long show just on coffee preparation methods. I mean, we're 15 minutes in, and we haven't even started talking about pairing. So um, maybe we'll just uh, kind of talk about um, just initially what notes we're getting, and then Colin can jump in um, once his coffee's ready and, and maybe talk a little bit more about Twin Engine and what they do. Um, I'm smoking, like I said, the Armon Alone uh, Canadian Original. Um, it's spicy. I'm, I've gotten to the point in the cigar where it's got some floral notes to it, so um, I am pairing with the uh, the dark dark roasted cigar blend, and that actually is going really, really well um, because I'm not normally a big fan of floral notes, um, which is kind of funny because a lot of Cuban cigars have floral notes, um, but it actually goes really well with the uh, dark roast because um, dark roast has some, some chocolatey to it. Um, it's very full-bodied, and it's offsetting the floral very nicely for me. Um, how about you, Rob? What are you? What are you? How are you doing so far? I'm I'm good. I'm uh, like I said. I'm smoking the uh, Florida Selva um, uh, Maduro Robusto. I've never actually smoked the Robusto before. Um, the number 15, which is more of a torpedo, was um, uh, was my cigar of the year last year, or my number one new release, I guess is the way we we say it. But uh, so this is the first time I smoked the smaller size. Um, it's definitely sweeter, I think, than the uh, than the torpedo. Um, and it's, I think it's just a standard uh, five by fifty, but I'd have to look. Um, it's it's really really sweet, and it's bringing out some earthy notes in the coffee for me, like that kind of some some earth, some kind of dirty flavors, but there's some chocolate in there as well. Uh, I'm drinking the uh, the medium roast, the Nicaraguan cigar blend number one medium roast. Uh, I have some of the dark roast, but we'll do that later. But uh, so yeah, I mean the pairing is great. I, I wanted to go a little bit. Um, a little bit off the map with what I would normally think about blending with a cup of coffee uh, because I've, I've actually had both of these blends before. Uh, we've had the samples for a while, so I've been sampling. And uh, I, I wanted to go with um, something that I would, like I said, would norm never normally pair with coffee. And this is a big, bold cigar. It's got a lot of sweetness to it um, and, you know, some spice that I'm expecting to pop up here in the middle. I haven't gotten there yet. But uh, I was just curious to see how this, this blend would work in uh, with uh, with a pairing with this coffee here, and so far so good. I'm always curious to know what uh, what how it goes with for people when they pair uh, this coffee, the the Nicaraguan cigar blend uh, number one, with with different cigars because you know there was a there was a design behind this coffee when we were uh, selecting the beans to use for this coffee. The 
the criteria that I used was basically I wanted certain flavors uh, like the chocolatey notes and the earthiness, which I think naturally go well with cigars, but I also wanted low acidity, and I wanted to try to have as clean of a finish as possible so that when you go, after you take your sip of coffee and you go on to take your puff of your cigar, um, that you can still taste the whole range of flavors in the cigar so that the coffee doesn't wash out the cigar. And so that was part of the design with uh, with selecting the beans that we use in uh, the Nicaraguan Cigar Blend number one, is that from a mild cigar to a strong cigar, you should be able to always drink this coffee with um, with whatever cigar it is that you want to do. And so um, I'll be curious as you guys go through your cigars to... Um, to to get some feedback on that. Now, what are you what are you smoking, Colin? You're obviously doing the uh, the cigar blend as well. Is that a dark roast or a medium roast that you're doing with the uh, the first pour over there? Uh, so the first pour over is going to be a dark roast, um, and then after I finish with this one, I'm going to do an espresso uh, from a different coffee that we've got. Um, but yeah, the first the first one's going to be uh, uh, it's, it's almost ready. Um, is going to be the cigar blend dark roast. Um, and what I'm smoking, I, tr I, I had big ideas in mind to go find certain cigars. Um, and then all of a sudden at the last minute I realized I had about one minute left. So I, I grabbed what I thought was one of the things I was looking for, but it wasn't. It turns out it's, um, it's the Cohiba Bahike 56, oh. um, which, will be, uh, which will be interesting. Um, I haven't had this cigar with, uh, with the coffee before, so I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. Well, I, I think, um, I mean, obviously we could talk about coffee for hours and hours, but uh, I definitely notice the uh, the low acidity for sure. Um, I mean, the nice thing about the, the sort of chocolatey, earthy notes is that um, they do leave a fairly clean finish, so you're not, um, you're not running over the cigar flavors the next time you take a draw between sips and between draws. I mean, I tend to smoke uh, pretty slowly versus some other people, but... Um, you know, I'd say so far the the dark roast espresso for Cigar Blend One is, uh, you know, going really well. There, there's a long name. I feel like I should explain why there's such a long name on this uh, on this coffee. The the Nicaraguan Cigar Blend Number One um, is basically because when I was picking the beans at, at first, um, I wanted to make sure that I got a coffee that would stand up to really intense cigars. And for me, nothing really. Uh, more exemplifies the strong cigars than a Nicaraguan cigar. And so I, I wanted to p put it up with the really strong Nicaraguan cigars and make sure that it would still be a coffee that wouldn't get washed away by the cigar that would still be enjoyable. And while I was doing that, I was seeing some different options for the future, and so I, I suspect that it won't be the last Nicaraguan cigar blend. And so that's why it's called the Nicaraguan cigar blend number one. Anticipation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> looking to the future. <laughs> Got to be looking to the future. So just a reminder to our audience, you're listening to Sharing Our Pairings, episode 35. We've got Colin Ganley from Twin Engine Coffee. This episode is brought to you by Dram Cigars. Dram Cigars, the best cigars out there to pair with whiskey. Uh, we are broadcast live around the world. Thanks very much to our Armed Forces Radio Network listeners, as Rob is fond of saying... You guys out there do stuff that we are not equipped to do, and we appreciate that. Um, I'm going to hop into one of the questions here because um, we're rolling right along. And our first question here is from Bob Dog, and this seems apt because you're coming up to it on an espresso for the next round, Colin. Um, Bob Dog wants to know what cigar is your favorite to pair with an espresso? For me, you know, it's the. It, it, I've actually been talking with some people about this because I was in Cuba last week and we were drinking a lot of espressos and people were trying to figure out what cigar to smoke with, with an espresso, but for me it was always very easy. There, you know, there are small cigars that I, that I like to have with an espresso. I like small cigars in general. I mean, this, this Bahiga 56 is way out of character for me. Normally I like a Panatella or... Um, uh, so last week uh, it would have been either the Por La Arniaga Panatella uh, or the uh, Cu Cuaba Divinos, I think it is. It's a, it's like a three and a half inch, four inch uh, Figurado. Okay. Um, okay. Or the H Upman Half Corona. Oh, you know, it's these these sizes are for me they're great lifestyle size um, cigars because whether you have a short drive and you're gonna have a cigar in the car or whether you're gonna have a um, 
you know, an espresso and have a cigar with it or something like that, those short cigars really fill a great amount of time that I think a lot of people find themselves with. You, you don't always, you, you very rarely have the, those two hours uh, to smoke a big cigar unless you set that time aside deliberately. So you, you, when, I'm, when I'm having a, I guess I should be a little more specific in answering the question, but First and foremost, it's the size. When I'm having an espresso, I don't want to start a cigar that's going to last me an hour for a coffee that's going to last me five minutes. So um, the size first, and then just quality. I mean, any high, high quality cigar, whether it's you know something from uh, you know the San Latano lines, I, I really like down here in Nicaragua. Um, Santiago uh, cigars down here in Nicaragua. Uh, the uh, Roma Craft uh, cigars down here in Nicaragua. Uh, from other places, the Chinook Cellars. Uh, there's, have you guys seen that new line called Crux? I, mean, mm -hmm. I guess it was new a year ago. So it's not that new, but um, they make some nice smaller cigars as well. So size first, and then just as high a quality as I can find in my humidor or close by to buy. And, and I would think that, uh, Robin, you can probably talk to this a little bit more than I can, <clears throat> but um, I think it, it's pretty easy to say that most of the cigar geeks, at least for Cigar Federation goes, we also like some of the smaller cigar sizes, and, and I would agree that, you know, if I'm smoking espresso, and espresso's, you know, if I'm not in Cuba, it's going to last me more than five minutes, it's going to last me probably 15 or 20 minutes, and I kind of want a cigar experience that, you know, I don't I don't want to go three espressos in, because, you know, yeah. I'll be pretty jittery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that, that makes for a fun day, though. Uh, for, for me, when I'm, when I'm pairing with coffee, I usually... I don't get a lot of espresso unless I'm out. If I'm if I'm getting an espresso or something, I'm usually out somewhere with my wife and I'm not smoking. Um, in fact, I don't know that I've ever had a cigar and an espresso at the same time. Um, oh, missing out. I don't have an espresso machine at home, uh, so whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm pairing with coffee, it's just with you know something out of the drip or uh, I mean I hate yeah. to even say it, but something out of the Keurig just because I'm lazy. Um, and for the most part, I do like to go with a smaller cigar. I like smaller cigars anyway, like you're saying. Smaller ring gauges for me uh, are, are definitely where I like to be. But uh, that rhymes. Um, it's uh, you know for me even this this is a, a good size for a cup of coffee. Let's. I don't know if this is a five by fifty. Does it say on the box? It doesn't say on the box. That's unfortunate. Um, but it's I mean it's a standard robusto, but it's smoking nicely and it's pairing really really well with this. It's so funny. And I was saying this to John, uh, Colin, before you got on. Nicaraguan cigar blend number one. And I picked maybe the one cigar in my humidor that has zero <laughs> Nicaraguan tobacco in it. It has none. I, and it didn't even occur to me until I, I just love this cigar so much. And I really wanted to uh, try it with this uh, with your coffee. And then I, I'm picking up the box and it says made in Honduras. And I'm like, oh, yeah, these are made in Honduras. And I'm looking and there's no. It's got a Honduras wrapper, a Jamastron. I always say that wrong. Uh, Brazilian yeah. Montefina Biner. It's got fillers from Honduras and Brazil. So, <laughs> it, so we we really are going way outside the box as far as uh, what to pair with it. But so have you have you seen one of these before? I've seen yep. one. Absolutely. So this is for between like fifteen and thirty five bucks. You can get one of these and you can make espresso at home. It's really? way, it's way more reliable than a an espresso machine that you have to plug in and all that stuff. It's a stovetop, uh, basically espresso maker. So you just put the water in here, the coffee in the middle, and then as you heat it up, it pressurizes the water, sends it through the coffee, and it creates espresso, which all gathers up here in the top. And then you basically have espresso in five minutes at home. This is what every single Italian household has. They'll have this in like four different sizes, depending on how many people are going to have the coffee. Because when you don't want to go out to a cafe, you just have this, and um, you can make espresso at home for practically nothing, and these machines last forever. So what is that called? Um, the brand that is most popular, I think they may have invented it, is called Bialetti. Uh, you can maybe see it on here, B-I-A-L-E-T-T-I. -T -T -I. Okay. Um, we also have one that we made, but it's a little bit bigger than that. It would be for if you're making, like, four cups or if you really want a lot of it. But... Um, but yeah, I mean, just you can go on Amazon or wherever and, and just pick one up for the right size. I think that one's a three cup uh, maker, and they're brilliant. I mean, it's it's a it just for you know for twenty bucks or whatever, maybe less, to have that in your kitchen as an option to make espresso is is pretty cool. 
It's awesome. Yeah, I've I've seen something like that before, but I never, like I said, I, I'm not the big, uh, the, I, I'm not really down with all of the coffee contraptions, but uh, yeah. um, but I'm big those on alliteration the, tonight, as yeah. apparently for some reason. So <laughs> those are the those are the only two contraptions I'm going to show you tonight. But I there's is a time sensitivity <laughs> thing with coffee, so. <laughs> Well, the contraption, I guess, kind of has a negative connotation to it, but um, I didn't mean it that way. Those things, those look awesome, and the idea that I can make espresso for like twenty bucks and I can have that thing forever, I'm in. I, I'm gonna. I, if if you guys couldn't hear me type, I would be looking it up on Amazon right now. <laughs> I mean, literally, you can probably buy one and own it for the rest of your life because it's it's machined aluminum, and as long as you just don't damage it. It'll it'll last forever. It's really simple, uh, uh, chemically and uh, with the physics of the whole thing. It's it's very simple. It should last forever. It'll get uglier and uglier as time goes on, and that better. brings character. It's uh, Bob Dog is in the chat room and he says it looks like there's a trip to Bed Bath and Beyond in his future. He's gonna have to go try and find one of those. So I don't know if they'll have them there, but it sounds like it'd be, it might be in the uh, Beyond section. <laughs> Who knows? John, you want to jump in with some questions here? Yeah, before we go on to our second pairing, and I'm uh, I'm already sort of pre-sampling here the uh, the medium uh, medium roast and really enjoying it. Uh, it's a question from uh, Stefan Lindblad, and uh, unfortunately he had, he'd asked me to ask this of you at the IPCPR, and of course because the IPCPR is always so crazy, completely slipped my mind. So before we go any further, I want to I want to get this question out there, um, yeah. and he says it's the most important question that anyone can ask. Where can you purchase the cigar, the cigar blend? And do you have a list of retailers on your website, or is there an online retailer that you can recommend? So, yeah, so um, I, I was anticipating that question, actually. We, we just opened up a whole lot of new retailers uh, during the trade show, and so there will be uh, about 20 stores uh, that will have it in the next month, but there are already a few stores that have it. Um, I'm going to put a blog post on our website tonight after uh, after we finish this interview that just gives you a list uh, of the places that you can get it now, and we're going to be updating our where you can buy it page um, soon, which will have every single one of those retailers. Um, so yeah, go to TwinEngineCoffee.com, um, and from there look in the blog area, and there will be a new post up tonight uh, that tells you where you can get the cigar blend. We do sell our non-cigar related uh, coffees online so you can buy directly from us for those things the reserves and and some of the other products but for the stuff uh, like the Nicaraguan cigar blend uh, we keep that exclusive to cigar retail stores so we'll, we'll send you to uh, to those retailers if you just check out the, the blog page which I mean is kind of a nice touch because you know you've got someone into your uh, presumably into your B&M and you know maybe they want a coffee it's just it's a natural thing to to pick up some coffee that's going to go with whatever cigars they're buying there. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, I mean it's if you think about it, there. Uh, well, I mean I, I live in Nicaragua here, so you know we're traveling around the country and we're meeting with tobacco growers and cigar makers. And what are they always drinking every single time that we see them before six p.m. Coffee. <laughs> I mean, I mean I coffee. Say, I was going to say rum. <laughs> but before six p.m. Before six p.m. Uh, so rum. I mean, but, you know. <laughs> And, uh, you know, same thing in every country that produces cigars. I mean, it's just a natural pairing. And, and it's not just the, the makers of cigars. It's the people who enjoy cigars. I mean, people drink coffee very naturally while they're uh, smoking cigars. And, uh, you know, I mean, go to, go to your local cigar uh, lounge. And during the daytime, not everybody's drinking booze. A lot of people are drinking coffee. And it, it's just a great pairing. Yeah, I mean, I kid, um, because when I go to Nicaragua, I mean, and Rob knows this, the very first thing in the morning for me is a nice strong cigar and a strong cup of coffee, and that, I mean, if I could start my morning out every day, I would be a super happy camper, and the same is true of Cuba. Um, you know, I'm planning a trip back to Cuba, and I said to the girlfriend, the day is going to start with breakfast, and then out on the veranda with a Cuban cigar and a Cuban espresso or, you know, a Cuban coffee, like, that's, that's just how it's going to go, because, you know, I think... I mean, we talk, we do a lot of liquor pairings on the show, but uh, mm -hmm. as you say, cigars and coffee are really meant to go hand in hand. Absolutely. I'm trying to fix my lighting situation, just by the way. <laughs> yeah, we, you have, you visually disappeared, but we know you're still there. As, um, as soon as you said you're in Nicaragua, it made perfect sense because the sun <laughs> goes down pretty darn quick. Yeah, it seems light outside, but I, I noticed that you guys can't see me at all. Yeah, so. it's, 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 kind of, it's getting. <laughs> Yeah, we've got a witness protection thing happening here, it looks like. But um, 
And, and for everybody listening on our podcast, listening on the Armed Forces Radio Network, they don't care because they can't see us anyway. Um, <laughs> and it's funny, John, when you say that, uh, the time that I spend in, in Nicaragua, I've been lucky to be down, lucky enough to be down there a couple of times, and uh, it's I'll, I'll roll out of bed and before I eat anything, and I'm firing up, you know, a Liga Pravada T52 in the morning, which I would never do at home. I just would never do it. Never. And uh, for some reason, when I'm down there, it just feels right. And uh, that's a damn good breakfast cigar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to, I want to get back to the the pairing because we're going to move on to our next one. Um, this pairing is fantastic. I, I I started with the medium roast, but you guys started with the dark roast. Should I have started with the dark roast? I think it's kind of fun to go out of order. I've I've gone just because uh, you know I like to be counterintuitive. I've gone to the medium roast and I've been slowly sipping on it, and uh, I have to say the medium roast is like, you know, we talk about creamy all the time. When we're talking about cigar reviews. The medium roast is just this velvety, creamy, chocolatey. Um, Roast. Uh, I think it would probably be overrun by if I, you know, if I was smoking a really heavy Nicaraguan cigar. I think it might be run over a little bit, but a nice medium, medium plus would be absolutely perfect. Um, you know, I kind of regret my cigar choices a little bit. I think it probably would have been better to go with uh, to go with uh, something from Nicaragua because I mean, most of my humidor is full of Nicaraguan cigars. <laughs> but um, I'm really enjoying the uh, I'm really enjoying the medium roast. How about you, Rob? Have you had um, any sips yet? Yeah, no, I started with the medium roast. I haven't, I haven't moved on to the uh, dark roast yet. Um, but, and it's funny because you talk about, you know, a, maybe a bigger, bolder cigar would run over it. Um, I think I, I, on accident, picked a perfect cigar for this because the, the flavor profile in this uh, Robusto is much sweeter um, and it's nowhere near as uh, peppery as the, uh, the other size that I'm used to, the, the number 15. And it's the pairing here is it just tastes like almost like bittersweet chocolate cake. It's <laughs> really, really, really good. Um, I it's gonna be I'm, I, we're hard pressed for the uh, the dark roast to pair any better. This is a perfect pairing for me. Um, it really highlights when I when I smoke a cigar and I look for I really look for those sweet notes. That's what I want. Um, unless I'm in a peppery mood, which I'm not today. Um, and I really wanted that sweetness. And it's it, the coffee has some of that sweetness in it already. Um, and it's really elevating the sweetness coming out of the cigar. The the pairing for me is is perfect. Yeah, that sounds like a great pairing. Typically, I, I like to d tell people that the difference between the medium and the dark. The dark is going to taste a little bit more roasted, um, and it's going to some of the uh, there's going to be a little bit more complexity. You're going to have a little more variety of flavors in the medium roast because uh, when you take it all, all up all the way up to a dark roast. You start to lose a little bit of the subtlety, but you still have all the main flavors kind of a little bit more boldly and uh, with a little bit more of a toasted flavor to it. Um, so you're still always going to have that chocolatiness. Um, you're always going to have that nice body to it, um, but you're just going to have a little bit more nuance in the medium, whereas in the in the dark it's going to be a little bit uh, more like a freight train a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Colin, uh, sorry, go ahead, Rob. I was just going to say on that note, uh, we do have um, a, uh, a bag here that's up for grabs. We're going to pick a few winners, and we're going to break this up. So when you, when you, whoever wins, uh, and this is the medium roast, um, and it's 400 grams, whatever that is. Um, that's, a, that's a lot. <laughs> and no, it's, it's kind of like the standard size. You buy a bag of beans or coffee. Uh, it's whole bean, and whoever wins, you're just going to get it in a Ziploc bag with some of my beautiful penmanship on it because I'm going to cut this up and give it to... Cut it up <laughs> like it's drugs. Uh, I'm gonna break it. <laughs> I'm gonna break it up uh, into more than one package so we can pick more than one winner. But um, we'll pick those winners later. But just want to let you guys know that uh, the medium roast. That's what you're gonna be getting. How are so, you? Uh, how are you? How are you picking the winners? It's a good question. How are that we picking the nice winners, John? Um, you know, I think what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna tie it into something on the Twin Engine Coffee site um, because I think that makes it fair for you know whether someone's uh, um, message emailing Rob from the Armed Forces Radio Network or they're emailing from podcast or whether they're listening live. Um, so maybe we'll come up with something interesting, some sort of nuanced that they'll have to search through the Twin Engine site for. And I think that uh, that makes it a little bit more fair for the audience. What do you think? You're asking me? I think it sounds great. All we'll, right, um, we'll pick, uh, I think we'll pick four or five winners, pick a couple live, and then... Um, We'll do uh, one or two from the Armed Forces and one or two from uh, podcast. 
All right, so Colin, you'll have to think of something kind of sneaky that they have to hunt around for on the website while I'm uh, coming up with this next question. This is your um, official heads up. Yeah, this is your heads up. I'm giving you some warning. So uh, Jason Meyer wants to know, Jason Meyer, sorry, wants to know what brewing method would you recommend for for the cigar blend coffee, you know, French press, pour over. There's so many different uh, methods out there. Um, he does ask, can you notice a difference between brewing it with different methods? But I think, you know, primarily, what what would be your recommended method? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, this is a so it's an interesting coffee. So this coffee that that we've selected, we only work with the top one percent uh, quality of beans here in Nicaragua, because the the whole point of our our company was when we first started out uh, a couple of years ago was that all the great coffee from Nicaragua was getting exported and just mixed into uh, like, for example, Starbucks uh, Home Blend or whatever it is that the different companies mm. call it. So it was it was just going into these big mixes so that they could put cheap coffee in and then they put a little bit of Nicaraguan in to elevate the quality of it. But it was never really named. People weren't really proud of it. And then here in, in Nicaragua, we were just getting all the leftovers, all the bad quality coffee. And so when we started out, one of the first things that we really wanted to do was give people a coffee to be proud of here in Nicaragua. Um, and we knew that by starting that way, we would start to develop a reputation um, outside of Nicaragua as well and, and be able to grow the business. But um, the reason I mentioned that little backstory is because using that quality of beans means that the, the intensity of flavor is very high. So one thing that people notice is they may not need to use as much uh, coffee to prepare the same amount of, uh, of, of liquid that they would with another bean. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <clears throat> so, okay. I mean, just so people out there are aware, um, and maybe we'll post something later, uh, there is a, a ratio of how much water to how much coffee you're supposed to use, and essentially what Colin's saying is dial the grounds back a little bit. And, and that, intuitively, that's what I did because I kind of assumed that the cigar blend would be a little bit more bold than what I typically drink in the morning. So I actually dialed back, I think I dialed it back about four grams um, and... It's like I said. So far, it seems. To, in fact, I'd say um, if I've done anything wrong, it's my my choice of cigars. I definitely should have gone something Nicaraguan. I think that would have been a much better pairing. You can bet that uh, when I wake up tomorrow morning, I'll be going for the dark roast and uh, a full body Nicaraguan. <laughs> so just I think, I think the the way that we grind it. Just to fin just to answer more specifically his question, the way that if you buy the coffee ground because we sell it either whole bean or ground. If you buy it ground, we've ground it specifically to make in uh, like a filter machine. So the, the typical um, thing that you would have in, in, in an American kitchen with, uh, you know, with a paper filter, we've, we've ground it so that it's perfect for that. But it's also uh, probably, for almost all French presses, it'll work in that as well. Um, the French press is usually going to keep the coffee in contact with the water for longer, and so you can use a little bit less of it. Um, I typically do it the way that I did it at the beginning of the show with the pour over or uh, the uh, like the filter machine. So, for me, and when John says I used four grams of of coffee grounds, um, I used the little scooper that came with mm -hmm. my coffee machine. I don't know if that's a teaspoon or a tablespoon or if it's four grams or not. I have no idea. It doesn't say anything on there. It just says, yeah, I don't think it says anything. Um, <laughs> And I used one scoop for each cup of coffee. And I feel like it blended pretty well. It tastes pretty good. Um, as far as uh, grinding the coffee, I've got a really cheap coffee grinder, and I just kind of did it until it looked right. So I was really kind of flying blind. And I, the point that I want to make is that even if you don't know what you're doing, it's still really good. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I mean, flying blind is the best way to put it. I, I hope that I did it at least close to right, but yeah, the yeah. outcome has been quite tasty. So, well, you have a, you have a big margin for error with this coffee because no matter how much you put in it or how little you put in it, it's never going to be bitter because that's that's the whole point of or that's one of the main reasons to buy the top quality coffee is because it doesn't have any of those uh, beans that were affected by any kind of mold or fungus or insects or anything like that. That's we have zero percent of those beans in our coffee. That's um, you know, we have to pay a little bit more at the farm level to have all that stuff sorted out. But 
obviously it's worth it because you know at the end of the day we can always say that we've got you know the top quality coffee in Nicaragua. So yeah, you you can you can make a lot of uh, you can do a lot of experimentation, and you're never going to end up with a bad cup. You may want to dial it back or or take it up a notch, but you're never going to end up with bitterness or those kind of problems with with the twin engine coffee. So you've got uh, you've got margin for error. It's and I'll just I'll just call it idiot proof because <laughs> I didn't screw it up. So <laughs> so I think we're good. Uh, and there's a couple of guys in the chat room here who are uh, commenting on how scientific I am, and that Doug and I use the exact same science when it comes to making coffee. So Doug, you can handle this coffee too, man. And it's it's really tasty. <laughs> I recommend it. Go ahead, John. I cut you off a little bit again. No worries. As and we've got a lot of questions about uh, coffee sourcing in the growing region, so maybe we'll touch on some of those as we enjoy our second pairing here. Uh, Harley Holmes would like to know, do you buy your coffee direct from the farmers? I think you already touched on that. Uh, or do you purchase through an exchange, and do you have an in-house roaster, or do you purchase roasted coffee? So we do, we do everything except manage the farms. So... Um, we buy, uh, we buy in a couple. We we buy from a couple different sources here in Nicaragua, but essentially it's all direct from the farm. Every once in a while, the farmer will have somebody who helps them sell the coffee, um, and so there's a little bit of an extra layer. But but if we talk to those people, we take it back to the farmer and and go check their land and everything and and their practices. So essentially, you could say we're always buying directly from from the farmers. Um, and at that point, as soon as we take it from from the farm we do everything from that point. So we take those green beans, we manage how they're uh, processed, uh, you know, for different coffees we put them out in the sun in different ways, um, we, we want them cleaned in certain ways, different things like that, and then as soon as the beans are, uh, are, are done with that process, we put them in hermetic storage and hold them ourselves until literally right until they're ready to be roasted and when they're ready to be roasted it's because we're sending them somewhere to a customer so um, this is so so we're doing everything from the from the point where we take it from the farm through um, processing it when it's green all the way up and then protecting it until we roast it and then as soon as we roast it we package it up and send it to whoever the customer is so we're very vertical but uh, we don't have any farms right now. We're thinking about maybe uh, getting a farm to do some work with some experimental coffees. But actually, I prefer to not uh, have the farm for right now, because you know, with any agricultural product, whether it's grapes for wine or whether it's tobacco, if you have a farm, um, you have good years and bad years. And if we don't have a farm, we can avoid that problem um, by not having a farm. We can we can bounce around a little bit. We can buy from just the farms that are doing really well that year. If a farmer has a bad year and is struggling to sell, we can find other ways to help them out but not use the, the coffee in, in ours. And that's how we're able to guarantee that we always have that top quality coffee is because we don't have to use the coffee that we grew, um, whether it's good or bad. You know, what I, Does that make sense? Absolutely. It's yeah. for for us that was one of the things that we wanted to make sure to do because in order to present a, a sort of a a product at that level of quality we had to have some way of of guaranteeing that it was always going to be at that quality and one of the things that made sense to us my wife's an agricultural economist um, and I've been working with uh, with cigars and wine for quite a while and one thing that from our experience that we saw as a, a nice way to do that is just to buy from the farms and pay a premium to the farmers. And by paying that premium to the farmers, it means that they're always going to want to sell to us first. So we, in essence, get our first pick of stuff by paying like 20% more um, or whatever it happens to be uh, for, for that coffee. Just a reminder to our audience that you're listening to Sharing Our Pairings, episode 35, Twin Engine Coffee with special guest Colin, brought to you by Dram Cigars, the best cigar with pairing for whiskey. Uh, we're enjoying a couple different coffees here, and uh, I'm actually uh, part of most of the way through my um, my medium roast already, and uh, I'm eyeing up that dark roast because uh, dark roast is kind of my uh, wheelhouse where I live and breathe. Rob, how's the uh, dark roast treating you so far? Um, I just want to say I love the way that you do the read right after uh, you do a little break there. It's so professional. Thank you. And and, and I just I make it up. I mean, <laughs> no, it's smooth, how, man. Yeah, that's just just how we roll. I mean, 
it's my <laughs> show, and uh, I blame myself, and then I go and pull my hair out about all the mistakes I made during the show. No, I don't. I don't do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's smooth, man. I like it. Um, okay, so the pairing here, and I was just thinking about it. The pairing here is very different for me. Uh, it's 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 still very good. It's much earthier. Um, I'm losing some of that sweetness that I was getting uh, before, but it's bringing out some more spice in the cigar. There's some more earthy flavors there. Um, I think if I had to choose between the two, I preferred the first pairing, but they're both really good. Uh, this is just a very different... It's surprisingly different, actually. Um, I was expecting a, a difference, but um, it's, it's, it's very different for me. And it's, it could be some that I'm getting into a different part of the cigar because I'm about halfway through. So that probably has something to do with it as well. Um, I might go back to the to the uh, the medium roast at some point here because I've still got a little bit left in my little thermos. John, this was a brilliant idea because I'm thinking, how am I going to keep this coffee warm? <laughs> and he's like, well, use a travel mug. I'm like, duh. And the only reason that we have these because my wife doesn't take coffee with her to work and my commute is like 45 feet, so I don't need a travel mug. Uh, <laughs> We actually got these for a trip when we went to Mexico because my wife always finds the coolest stuff. Somebody said to bring these with you, and when you go to the bar and they make you like with the fruity slushy drinks, have them poured in here, and that way it doesn't melt. Yep. Genius. <laughs> so if, if whether you want something to stay hot or cold, they work very well. And I don't even know what brand it is. I'm not getting paid for it. I just think it's a great idea. And I mean, the, the interesting thing, because I am a, a huge coffee nerd, is, as I said before, all, with all things I do, I'm obsessive. And what's, I think what's interesting to me about coffee is that you can take a bean and you can, you can take it to four different roast levels and you can get different characteristics out of that. And to me, you know, there's so many parallels between um, cigar blending and coffee because you, you, know, you talk about the different ways you bring the, the beans together and the different roast levels and what, what you're ultimately trying to accomplish, and you can tweak that dial in so many ways. So it, it's interesting, I think, for us to be trying the same blend at different roast levels and, and certainly with different preparation methods. It's a, it's a great experiment to do. I, it's, it's, it's very fun. I, it's, isn't it amazing how much of a difference there is, too, between those two roast levels? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm just starting in the dark, and uh, I mean, you. I think you said it earlier, where you said the complexity is ramped up, and I mean, whole and Ellie, The first, the first sip was just uh, a whole different level of flavor. Um, even the mouthfeel is different, and uh, I mean, I'm. You know, I'm only one sip in, and I'm already enjoying it. So I'm looking forward to to downing a couple more sips and driving my girlfriend crazy with the jittery. <laughs> so that's what I was telling the guys in the chat room. I actually have. Uh, I have some work that I have to do after this, and I think, well, it's probably a good thing because I'm going to be wired by the time the show is over <laughs> after having, you know, four cups, five cups of coffee uh, yeah. during. But, you know, it, it really is, uh, it's amazing the difference um, in the flavor of the coffee, it's just independent of the cigar, and the way that it plays with the cigar is so very different. Um, yeah. it, it, it really is, it really is amazing. It's It makes for, like for me, normally when I pair with a cup of coffee, I usually have two cups of coffee because mm -hmm. it takes that long to get through the cigar. And this could be kind of a fun thing where I, I start with the medium and I end with the with the uh, dark roast and just brings another level to that pairing And when I'm sitting out on the patio just kind of hanging out. But it, it does, uh, it adds another level to it. it the, the complexity level is there. Um, I, I, I don't know if I can speak to the mouth feel. I mean, they feel the same to me. But um, the... Uh, the, the flavors it's bringing out in the cigar are totally different, man. It's really blowing me away. It's Yeah, it's fun to talk about this because this is what I spend a lot of time thinking about, especially around uh, harvest season and buying season, uh, which is typically around uh, between, like, January through about April. Um, it's a lot about taste, and, uh, and and that's it's a lot of fun to get into that and try the coffee in a million different ways and try the stuff from all these different farms. Um have you have you seen any of our uh, any of the products that we make for other uh, for any different cigar brands out there? Have you, did you see any of that stuff at the show? The I one think, that uh, that we're all familiar with is the Intemperance Coffee. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that was the only one that I saw. Okay. Sorry. Some of them are a little bit more subtle that that we make them. Um, but the uh, yeah, so the Intemperance was a was a limited edition that we did last year, and that sold out, and so. Um, We've got. We still have this. We, we have the same coffee, the same farm um, that we're uh, that we still have. People retailers can order it uh, from us directly now, 
um, it's not being sold through Romacraft anymore. Now uh, we're doing that for them because that it was just for that limited edition. Um, we have, and, and why I wanted to bring it up is because of this profile thing, because we're working exclusively with Nicaraguan coffees, and you you see what a difference the same beans roasted for about 12 to 15 seconds longer makes which is all the difference between a medium roast and a dark roast. It's like 12 to 15 seconds uh, on the roaster. That's the only difference. Wow. Wow. But ima imagine what a difference is made by going from one side of the mountain to the other side of the mountain, or going from one side of the mountain to uh, the same side of the mountain 200 meters lower, or something like that. It's amazing what kind of variety of flavors we can get. So that that intemperance coffee that uh, that we make is an extremely earthy coffee. That's just the character of that farm. Um, this year we're uh, we're producing a coffee for the brand uh, Chinook Cellars. Do you know their their mm -hmm. cigars? Absolutely. Um, so he's got a cigar called the Pressois, and it it has a really chocolatey uh, character to it. Um, uses the San Andres Maduro wrapper, I believe, which always has that really chocolatey taste to it. And he wanted, he's a, Brian is a, is a good friend of mine, and we were talking about coffee, and he was wondering if we could make a coffee that was extremely chocolatey. Now, you've noticed that our cigar blend has a real pronounced chocolatey note, and especially if you put a little bit of sugar in it, I, I don't know if you guys did that, I, I didn't do that tonight, but if you put a little bit of sugar in this coffee, all of a sudden that chocolatiness really kind of pops out. Um, so what we wanted to do, and it's because of one of the farms that we use, so what, uh, he happened to come to me right at about the time when, when we were buying coffees, and there were two farms that we found where my notes were, um, I, I write these really extensive notes when we were going through tasting the different beans, and on, on these two farms, or on one of the farms at least, I wrote a note, uh, chocolate, bam, because it just <laughs> hit you with, with this like chocolate taste. It, it was almost like the coffee taste was a secondary to the chocolate taste, and it was just—it's something that we always look for for our uh, for our cigar blend and for our estate blend. Um, but these farms just had it in spades. So when he told me that he he was interested in making a coffee to go along with his Presswa cigar, I said, "No problem. We've got exactly the the coffee that that would fit with that chocolatey profile cigar." So he's going to have that coffee, I think, in about a month or so, um, for sale in cigar retail stores and I think other types of retail stores. Um, so watch, watch out for that. It's it's interesting how much variety we can get in the three major growing zones that have the high quality coffee, and then within those zones, then the different uh, areas, different sides of the mountains and levels, and and different types of soil and and cover as well, tree cover. So I'm going to hop into, because we've got a ton of audience questions here. I'm going to move yeah, on yeah. quickly to... Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. We've got about 10 minutes on our AFRN segment here. So I'm going to ask a question from Jason Myers. He says he really likes your, uh, and I'm going to probably butcher the pronunciation. but Elefante. Elefante. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The beans are larger than average. It's got some great flavors. Can you talk a little bit about the growing region for this type of coffee and why it's so different from many of the other coffee types out there? Yeah, so this coffee is um, is really strange and unique. It came from a place in Brazil called Margo Hipe, and it's basically what it is, is, or how you can identify it, is it's a tall, skinny, weak plant that produces these oversized beans. And uh, it, it doesn't produce very many of the beans, so most farmers don't want to grow it because, you know, they sell by the pound, and if a yeah. plant doesn't yield a lot of beans, you know, why, why grow that? Well, the reason why you should grow it is because that bean um, has more body than any other bean. So when you make coffee out of the, uh, like when you make our Elefante coffee, even before, if you don't add anything to it, it almost already tastes like you put cream in the coffee because it just has that much body to it. It's just a really creamy, uh, viscous sort of tasting coffee, and it's delicious. It's an absolute world-class coffee. We, all, we, all, we almost don't even talk about that coffee because we have a hard time procuring it, and it's really expensive for us to buy. Um, and people just, if, they, if they've heard about it, if they know it, they just buy it, and it just kind of moves. And so I, we almost don't, e don't talk about that coffee very much. I'm very proud that we have it. Um, it was our first, when we launched the company, 
that was the coffee that was our reserve. And so for our first year, that was our reserve coffee. And then in the next year, we have a, a different reserve. Um, but we still have kept that that bean and, and or that coffee, and we just call it Elefante. It's uh, it's a beautiful coffee. It can be grown in a lot of different places, but where we like to get it from is a region called Hinotega, where the coffees tend to have a little bit more of a chocolatey note. So along with that... Um, and a little lower acidity. So along with that creaminess, you get a little chocolatiness and low acidity, which I think is a, an amazing combination for that, that bean. Now, is that one that you guys sell on your website? It is on the website, yeah. It's so funny. I, I, you said in there two or three times we don't even like to talk about it, and that's the one other blend that we asked you about. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, and, you know, and we didn't know that, but I just think it's funny. Like, that was... Yeah. That was the one that people were asking about, and the one you didn't want to talk about. Anyway, moving on. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to talk about well, it. Well, no, just, I, I know it's it. hard. It's just hard to get, and yeah. so like this year, we had to, in order to get any of it at all, we actually had to buy the entire crop from a farmer oh uh, to, to get it, uh, which was more than we wanted to buy, especially because of how, spe how expensive it is. We don't make very much money on that coffee, but it's um, it's just it's something we always want to have. Uh, going forward, and, and I've mentioned to you that we're thinking about buying a farm this year. Um, if we do that, we're definitely going to be planting that plant. Interesting. Nice. Rob, did you want to uh, hop in on some of the audience questions? We got, I think we've got about five minutes left in our Armed Forces Radio Network segment here. Um, I, you probably have them more lined up than I do. I was. Why don't you do it? All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, good question from Doug, which is a bit of a switch up here. Doug Shepard wants to know, uh, besides coffee, what's your favorite part of living and working in Nicaragua? Ooh, favorite part. You know, it's um, it's a there's a lot of diversity here um, geographically. So we've got uh, we live in a city called Leon, which is a beautiful old colonial city. Uh, so we've got the charms of the colonial city, but then you also have the sort of uh, the volcanoes that surround us, which always keeps you on your toes, and uh, <laughs> you can always see that when you get on the on the highway. Um, so you know that always reminds you of that. But ten minutes away uh, is the Pacific Ocean, so we've got those we've got all that great uh, fish and and things like that uh, from there. So it's a nice mixture here in Leon of those different things. And then not far away is Esteli, where the cigars are and where I have a lot of friends. And then down south, there there are a lot of places for surfing. And and I don't surf, but it's it's that type of uh, of place. Um, I didn't I didn't want to pretend that <laughs> that. Um, oh, we totally surfing. would have bought it, man. Just roll with it. <laughs> so the people who know me wouldn't have uh, let me get by with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, the last time I went to Nicaragua, and I'll jump in with a question here too, John. Um, when we got off the plane, there was a ton of people there, and they all had surfboards. I think there was some kind of contest or something going on at, at that time of year. It was in uh, it was in May. I don't know if they they do something special in May with surfing. I, I don't surf either, uh, but yeah. uh, I happened to, and it was it just struck me as odd. That I'm in Nicaragua, and there's a ton of surfers, but I guess it's a it's a big deal. There are a couple of great uh, surf. Um, surf spots here with with uh, well known breaks, I guess they're called. Um, <laughs> and one of one of them is is near us, and one of them is down in the south of the country, both on the Pacific side, which is the easy side to access. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of tourism down here for surfing. Um, there's a big fishing uh, competition uh, that's taking place this week, oh, wow. and. So there's you know there's a lot of stuff that kind of goes on by the ocean which is which is nice it's a, it's a lot different from where I grew up in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, so that's why you're not a surfer. Okay, I get it. Well, I grew, <laughs> I grew up in California and they think they think that we're all surfers and I'm not. <laughs> the water up here there, there there's beaches in my area. I'm I'm just outside of San Francisco. The water is it's way too cold. Hmm. Uh, unless you're you're going in a wetsuit. So we got a few minutes left. Uh, I think this might be our last question here. This one's going to be from Douglas Shepard. Um, he says, I always enjoy uh, talking and listening to entrepreneurs. What stokes your entre entrepreneurial spirit? Um, I, I guess it's got to be insanity, right? I mean, <laughs> there's... Um, <laughs> the, the, the coffee business started uh, because um, I owned a, a, a large portion of a cigar magazine and was working mostly from home and traveling. And um, my wife was working for big organizations, and she wanted to. Uh, apparently, she thought that my lifestyle looked good, 
So she wanted us to uh, to do something entrepreneurial together, and that's how the idea eventually came for uh, doing starting Twin Engine Coffee, and moving to Nicaragua and all these changes that we've done for that reason. Um, and so, you know, you you have to be a little bit crazy to to do it, um, but also, you know, the, the there's something exciting about about growing something yourself, about you know hiring new people and watching their, uh, particularly down here in Nicaragua, but it, it applies everywhere. You know, when you hire someone new and you see that the income that they're getting is is having a transformative effect on their family and on their children and on their lifestyle, um, you know, that's a that's an extremely rewarding thing. And, and when you see people enjoying your product, especially, you know, that's what's an, a great thing about coffee is we get to see people via the internet and different things enjoying our product all around the world and that's it's just a there's a lot of satisfaction that kinda keeps you motivated through all the difficulties of you know working in a third world country and and dealing with some of the issues that every entrepreneur has to deal with um, but but you know those things I think uh, keep you motivated and um, that yeah that helps us out a lot so of course, if uh, someone wants to check out more about uh, Twin Engine, your website is uh, TwinEngineCoffee.com. Is that correct? It is. Yeah. So uh, as you mentioned before, you can do some ordering online at TwinEngineCoffee.com. Ask your local B and M to get in contact with Colin if they're not already carrying Twin Engine. Uh, you know, this would be a great time for them to carry Twin Engine. Um, that takes us to the end of our Armed Forces Radio Network segment. Uh, I just want to thank all our Armed Forces Radio Network people for listening in. And, of course, thanks very much for our podcast listeners. Uh, this has been a great show, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about coffee after the, uh, the end of the segment. And as we always say, at the end of our segments, drink better, drink less. And we're back. So that was, uh, that was the end of our Armed Forces Radio Network segment. Now, normally if uh, Col- uh, Logan was here, he'd, he'd probably go on a swearing tangent, but we like to keep it a little classier here on sharing our pairings. I, I just want to say that the, um, the dark roast is probably my favorite so far, um, and I you know, regretfully have picked the, the super wrong cigar to go with it, and I'm going to have to revisit this tomorrow, I think. I tried to tell you. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm immediately thinking like a 1502 Emerald or a 1502 Ruby or uh, anything from Skip Shop would be a, a great choice. I am a huge fan of uh, San Latano, actually, the, uh, a lot of the San Latano Maduro. Um, you know, I think all of those would be an excellent choice. I'm going to have to revisit this and, and get a little wired in the morning tomorrow, I think. <laughs> I've, uh, it's, a good, it's a great way to start your day. Yeah, absolutely, and... Um, Colin, just just so you know, we are still live and people can still hear us. Mm-hmm. This will still go out on our uh, podcast as well. Um, the uh, I don't know which one I like better, to be honest. I know which pairing I liked better today. Um, that and that was the uh, the medium uh, medium roast. Uh, it just the, the brought out such sweeter notes in the cigar. Um, but uh, I really enjoy both the coffees for very different reasons. Uh, and it's just I mean to me like John had uh, drawn the the parallel between. Uh, coffee industry and the cigar industry. It's I don't. I'm not going to say that I prefer a, a light roast or a medium roast or whatever. And I'm not going to say that I prefer like a Habano wrap cigar as opposed to a Connecticut or you know a, a Maduro. Um, there's for me there's a time and a place for just about every every kind of cigar. And there probably is just about every kind of coffee. I'm really intrigued by that Elefante. I think I'm going to order some of that myself if it's in stock. That just sounds really interesting. But um, really enjoy both the blends. Uh, today and um, yeah, I mean, even if you don't know what you're doing with coffee, like me, I have no idea what I'm doing, and they both tasted great. Yeah, they're pretty. They, it's it's hard to screw up. I mean, that was we we almost. I mean, it's it's tough to uh, to decide on what products to offer sometimes because you want to. There's always this. You know, people are constantly emailing you or calling you or asking you for this or that. And it, it makes you think, well, if people want a light roast of such and such, maybe we should offer a light roast of that. But there's always, of course, also pressure to keep the number of products you have down to a minimum. Um, it just makes life easier for everybody, especially on the production side. Um, and so we only offer two products with options. Uh, they all either come in whole bean or ground. 
but we only offer different roasts on the estate blend and the cigar blend. Um, and because I'm, I'm kind of drawing on your point about idiot proof, because <laughs> with, with all with all the other ones, we we just decided we you know we can't have an unlimited number of products, so we'll pick the roast that we think exemplifies this this bean or this blend the best, and we'll only offer that. Um, but for those ones, for those kind of flagship ones, we wanted to offer a little bit more variety to people for who, who have a real specific preference for dark or light or medium or, or whatever. Um, but they're all, they're all idiot-proof. Um, those, those two lines work well in all three roasts, which is why we're comfortable doing that. Yeah, they're definitely very enjoyable. Um, and... Like I mentioned before, we've got some that we're going to send out to some winners. So, John, how are we going to do this? Let's so, a uh, few but, tonight. Yeah, so you said we're going to pick uh, two live listeners, two podcast listeners, and then a couple AFRN listeners. Is that the uh, is that I think the we can. I think I can, uh, I can cut this up into bag, six different bags. And, I mean, that's still plenty of coffee for you guys to get a good taste of it. Uh, so we'll uh, <laughs> cut it up. <laughs> so, yeah, let's, uh, let's pick a couple live. Um, can I and I know we we wanted to you know jump through hoops and everything and I want I want the let's pick three li three live winners and I'm just gonna pick one kind of uh, just because I'm gonna pick Jared Grillet because if Jared didn't win he's been talking about this all day on <laughs> Facebook and Twitter and he's been all about we he he was kind of bugging us because we didn't ask his questions even though you answered both of his questions without us actually asking them. So okay. I think if, if we don't pick Jared, his head will explode. So, <laughs> so we're going to pick Jared, uh, Jared Garat. And yes, Jared, I have all your information, but email me anyway. Um, and then let's pick, uh, let's figure out the hoops they need to jump through, and we'll pick those other two winners tonight. Cool. All right, Jared, so li Jared uh, like me on Facebook so we can uh, chat about this too. Yeah, Jared, do that. Jared's all about it, man. Once he saw that we were doing coffee, he, uh, he got really excited. That's cool. So, Colin, is there something on the website that we can uh, we can have the the dutiful listeners find an email to Rob, like perhaps a uh, a region or a, or a particular name of a cigar blend that they might have to do a little bit of searching on the site for? Yeah. So, um, do you want two questions or just one? I th I think we'll 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 be uh, we'll be kind and we'll just give them one tonight. All right. Um, give me half a second. I want to change what I was going to do here. All right. So while you're searching for that, I'm just going to talk some more about this uh, this dark roast because uh, what's blowing me away is that um, normally I do put a little bit of uh, honey in some of my coffee, especially if it's in the morning because I find that um, honey uh, straight yeah just a little bit of um, of uh, uncreamed honey, so just uh, raw honey, uh, just just like a like a quarter teaspoon, um, and really what it is is it's just a dark coffee is just too much for me first thing in the morning. Like, I get a little jittery, so I find the sugar kind of, the, the natural sugar from the honey offsets it. Um, but there is a, a natural sweetness uh, to the dark roast, which is really, really nice. And uh, I don't even know if I would add anything other than maybe a little bit of cream to it. Um, I think sugar would probably take a little bit away from that coffee because, like it's like Colin was saying earlier, it's, it's uh, very full body for flavor. I'm really enjoying it. I thought it was interesting when uh, Colin. We'll talk about Colin like he's not here anymore. I think when Colin mentioned uh, putting a little bit of sugar in the the medium roast. I don't put anything in my coffee. Uh, Ninety nine times out of a hundred, I don't put anything in it unless it's really really crap coffee, and then I'll put stuff in there because I have to. But I try to avoid drinking that. Um, so I I had these black, and I drink most of my coffee black. But when he said that it brings out some more of that that chocolatey flavor, I'm the next time I have the uh, the medium roast, which will probably be tomorrow morning, um, I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar in there and see and see how that goes. I'm curious because um, I like that I like that chocolate flavor that I was getting. So uh, maybe put a little bit more in there would be even better. Okay, so I've got the question ready for you. All right. So um, on the website uh, we, where we talk about the uh, Nicaraguan cigar blend number one. Um, it gives you some information about that blend, and it says that. Uh, this coffee is the perfect partner for a cigar at what time of day? Okay, so send that to John as a direct message on Cigar Federation, and then we'll pick the first two. John, what do you think? 
That sounds good. So the first person right now live who uh, messages me on the live chat with what time of day is the cigar blend number one best at, and I'm, I'm looking, I'm waiting for those messages to come in, and I have no idea what the answer is. And then for our uh, podcast listeners and our FRN listeners, just email rob at cigarfederation.com with, the, uh, with um, Twin Engine Coffee in the title and then the answer in the body, and make sure to include your address because otherwise mm-hmm. Rob's not going to know who to send it to. It's so full, full complete address with zip code, um, obviously your name and with the answer in the uh, body. And Rob knows, uh, he's got a list of who's naughty and nice, so he knows if you've been listening to the podcast or not. So uh, don't don't try to circumvent our system because you'll get on the blacklist. It'll happen. So, yeah, so we'll pick two um, we'll pick two podcast listeners, and I want to pick two AFRN listeners as well. So if you're, you're checking in on AFRN, um, let me know where you're stationed and, uh, and how we can get this to you. Um, I know most of we can ship to... You know, I could shift to an APO or an FPO. I think that's what they're called. Um, but uh, just make sure you include that information where you're stationed at, and, uh, and um, <clears throat> that way we can get back to you with all the with all the info and get uh, get it sent out to you. So, so uh, tri- Trip is uh, Johnny on the spot here, and uh, he says that the answer is any time. That was going to be my guess. <laughs> is that right? That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. All right, Trip, you are a lucky number winner number two. So now. I'm sure a bunch of people are just going to copy his answer, but it's going to be <laughs> like the fastest here. Well, that, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, you, I'll, I'll you give the answer on the air. Yeah, now all the podcast. Now we need a different question for the podcast people now. Now we need. <laughs> now we need a new one. No, because John, you screwed it up, man. I screwed it up. This is why yeah. I'm not in charge of the giveaways because I just. <laughs> so let's, uh, Colin. I'm going to have to ask you to come up with one more question because th- you think you said you okay. had two to begin with, right? Hopefully you've got I do, a, yeah. I just I just need to look up the wording, but yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll this will be so if you're listening on the podcast, I'll, I'll be able to know if you stopped listening right when the <laughs> when the uh, <laughs> the name was put out because the real question comes right after. Okay, um, so you, so I, I've got it. Okay. Um, are talking about the Elefante coffee? Um, what percentage of this coffee is Maragohipe beans? What percentage of Maragohipe is is uh, is that reserve coffee? All right, there you go. So that's that's for AFRN and uh, podcast listeners, and I will uh, I'll track down the answer so I'll know if you're right or wrong. But so we, we've got our two uh, we've got our two winners tonight. It was Trip and Jared, which I think is is kind of fitting because they were both kind of bugging me about it all day. So um, <laughs> you you knew that Trip was already he already had the side up and he was ready to go when the question came out. So <laughs> so that's good. So maybe we can squeeze out a couple more audience questions because we do we do have a couple left here. Um, we've got a good question from uh, Doug, which I think I'm I'm going to try and answer this. I'm going to try and be a Johnny Know It All. Um, he says with such amazing coffee and tobacco coming out of Nicaragua, he's just curious what's going on with the soil down there. What makes it so unique in being able to produce phenomenal crops? And my understanding, and Colin will correct me, I'm sure, it's it's the land of volcanoes, is it not? Is volcanic soil? It is. Yeah. I mean, we're we're right on the ring of fire. Um, and the a lot of the soil where the where these crops are grown are not from recent volcanoes, but they're from uh, long extinct volcanoes, which which actually works out much better because uh, all the minerals that have been brought up by the volcanoes have had time to uh, become extremely fertile soil, um, and so both in the valleys in this in a region not too far away from each other. Uh, in the valleys where the tobacco is grown and on the sides of the mountains where the coffee is grown, um, it does have its origins in, in uh, volcanic soil and uh, relatively recently, a thousand some years ago. Yeah, and I mean, you know, people talk about Hawaii all the time um, because Hawaii kind of has similar ecology going on with in terms of um, growing regions. I think what's interesting to me about coffee is that you can get coffee grown at different altitudes, and of course, the different altitude of growing makes a makes an impact in your flavor profile as well. It does, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. It seems there's some research that suggests that the altitude doesn't um, have any impact on the beans in and of itself, but rather the altitude creates the uh, the difference in nighttime and daytime temperatures. And it's actually those nighttime and daytime temperatures and the and the difference between them that makes the big difference for how those crops are grown. So whether and that seems to be the same situation with grapes, 
that are used for wine as well as with coffee. Um, and uh, so, but yeah, altitude is a great way to control for that because when you get between in that sweet spot between about 1,000 and 1,500 meters, you end up with about the right variance of temperature between daytime and nighttime. And down here, where we're closer to the equator, um, it doesn't get too cold at night. So you you get that nice balance where it's warm during the day, cool during the night, but never gets cold at night and and never gets too hot when you're up at those elevations. So, uh, first of all, I just want to thank Colin very much for being on the show. Um, you know, this has been, we kind of planned this, uh, gosh, I think almost a month and a half ago, and I think, um, you know, we definitely need to have Colin on the show at a future date as well, maybe do some more Nicaraguan coffee pairing with... with uh, <laughs> some Nicaraguan cigars. <laughs> some Nicaraguan cigars, yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, we could, I'm sure we could do an hour just on uh, growing regions and, and, and how you guys uh, operate, because there's just so much information there, but uh, I just want to thank you very much for being on the show, and uh, again, congratulations on uh, on the booth at the IPCPR. It sounds like that was a really great time for you guys. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. And then, you know, I mean, for me, this is just fun. It's nice to talk with you guys and, and uh, hopefully hear some stuff back from your audience as well. It seems like you have a, a great audience, so I'm interested to see what uh, what questions or conversations this sparks with them. So yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, share our coffee with you guys and, and uh, have a nice chat about it. So as we wrap it up, obviously TwinEngineCoffee.com if you want to find out more about Twin Engine Coffee or get in contact to do some ordering. Uh, Colin, where can people find you on social media? Um, right now the best place to, to, uh, is on Facebook, either Twin Engine Coffee or myself, Colin Ganley, on Facebook. And um, yeah, we, we're, we're not as active on the other social networks, but we're going to work on that in the future. All right, sounds good. So if you enjoyed tonight's episode, make sure to like on our YouTube channel. And, of course, uh, subscribe because uh, the more, more of you that subscribe, the quicker our content gets you. We really appreciate it. Uh, thanks again to Colin. And, uh, Rob, thanks for, uh, thanks for drinking all the coffee. Uh, I don't know what I got there. Um, we'll be back again in two weeks. Uh, so we're going to do some uh, scotch pairing. Uh, oh, boy. Gonna, oh, yeah, it's going to get a little crazy. Unlike the coffee pairing where we stay coherent and jittery, we're going to get loose and crazy. But as we say on sharing our pairings, drink better, drink less. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in.